All right. Shalom. Shalom to the elect of the nation of Israel, the elect of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. And once again, it's another video, and it comes to you through the spirit and power of Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Rakar Kwadash. All praises and glories definitely do. So I was inspired to do this video by the message this brother was saying, the brother Kazak. Uh, this is his page here, GMS Page Master. Uh, the name of the video is Prepare to See Great Changes. Now, he's covering a lot of topics in this video. And he's one of the brothers that I really enjoy watching, you know, his lessons. And um, he was talking, which I got the part uh, paused on this video. He was talking about how terrible the Heavenly Father is. And even Satan, you know, most people are afraid of Satan more than they're afraid of the Heavenly Father, which proves they don't know the Heavenly Father, especially the Lord's people, you Israelites out there. You're more afraid of Satan than you are of the Heavenly Father. When <laughs> the truth be told, the Heavenly Father is, is much more ruthless than Satan could ever be. As a matter of fact, did you ever think about who created Satan? The Heavenly Father created Satan for his own purpose. You know? So without further ado, pretty much that was the gist of what he was saying. And I, I liked what he was saying. And I decided to do a video about it. Hopefully it's edifying to you brothers and you sisters out there. And like I always say, the smartest thing we can do in this life is learn to fear the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. There is nothing smarter than that. And when I say fear the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, I do mean fear the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. You watch how you act, you watch what you say, you know, concerning the ministry, you watch how you act, you watch how you treat fellow brothers. Why? Because it's the right thing to do, first and foremost, but also you fear the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. And as it is written, that is the beginning of wisdom. I think that's Proverbs, the first chapter, the seventh verse. It speaks about the fear of the Lord. You always hear the wacky-tacky Christian, right? I love the Lord, and if loving the Lord is wrong, I don't want to be right, all that garbage. No, the Lord is looking for fear. That's what he's looking for. Fear lasts longer than love. Like I always use the analogy of a woman. A woman will tell you, I love you. and uh, She'll tell you that on the phone while she's bouncing on another man's rod. Okay? <laughs> you know, I have to be that graphic to drive home the point. She'll tell you, I love you while she's like she's laid up with another man in the bed. You know, she's on the phone speaking to you. Oh, I miss you. I love you. And meanwhile, there's another man there with her. Right. But if your woman tells you, I fear you. Well, that's a whole different matter. OK, because now if she truly fears you, she'll think twice uh, sleeping behind your back, you know, sleeping around behind your back because she fears you. So what is the point? The point is fear is better than love, okay? Um, it's nice to have both, but fear is what the Lord is looking for. And here's the scripture to prove it. Let's go to Proverbs, and then I'm going to go right to the brother's video. I don't want to make a long introduction, but I had to say what I just said and bring out the scripture to back it up. Proverbs 1 and 7. What does it say here? The fear of the Lord. It didn't say the love of the Lord. Again, these wacky-tacky Christians. Oh, I love the Lord. I love, brother, do you love the Lord? Is the Lord is the love of the Lord in your heart? God is all love. And they love that word love, man. And they don't even understand what love is. The Bible tells you what love is. And this is love that we follow his commandments, Second John and 6. You ask them to define the word love, they, they haven't got a clue. But they love saying that word love. God is love all the time. You don't know the Heavenly Father, man. The Heavenly Father is not love all the time. The Heavenly Father believes in hate. The Heavenly Father believes in killing. Yes, I said it, killing. Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter, the Heavenly Father clearly said, I, make a, I kill and I make alive. Have you seen the horrific ways people can die? People can get out and can, 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 can be kicked off the planet Earth? Huh? Have you seen that? The horrific ways? You still believe that God is all love? You don't know the Heavenly Father, man. But you're getting ready to, like the brother Kazak was going into. Anyway, let me quickly read the scripture and go right to the video. Proverbs 1 and 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. I note the word fear. Fear. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. There you go. So without further ado, let's jump into it. You know... 
which two thirds of our people they Israelites, but they in the spirits of heathens, you know. But really, they is you know they Israelites, but they wicked right now. You know, but Satan working through uh, the actual other nations, and he's mainly working through the Edomites, his physical counterpart. But but Satan himself, he looked like a so called black man. When I think of Satan, I, I think about that one Jake. I forget his name right now. But if you watch that one movie, uh, Tales from the Hood. <laughs> I think his name is uh, Clarence Williams the Third. I think that's the actor he's talking about. The movie uh, Tales from the Hood. You got the one Jake. We had the uh, the Don King hairstyle. Yeah. You know, <laughs> looking like uh, what's the dude from uh, from Back to the Future? But you know, like you know, hair electrocuted, yeah. so to speak. You no know, hair standing up. But you know, the movie yeah, he's talking about the professor. I forgot his, his real name. Lloyd something, I think his real name was. He was also in Taxi, the sitcom Taxi. Um, and uh, uh, the guy who played um, uh, the devil in the movie Tales from the Hood, he was in the sitcom, um, or he was in the drama series. It wasn't a sitcom. It was a drama series called, uh, called The Mod Squad. The Mod Squad. He played Link. He played the character Link. Those of you that might be familiar with the Mod Squad, it's a, it's a, a, a dramatic series that came out in the late 60s. Anyway, let's move on. Tales from the Hood, the guy that was playing the devil the whole time. But but you saw, like, he, he, he was so-called black. You know, but he was like, oh, you're you going to get knee deep in the shit. See, people don't know yeah. the Heavenly Father. The Lord created Satan, man. And, and that's what the wacky tacky Christian don't get. The Heavenly Father created Satan for his own purpose. That's too deep for the for the average wacky tacky Christian. The average wacky tacky Christian believe that Satan and the Heavenly Father is because they don't understand the scripture where it says there was war in heaven, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. They have no clue what that scripture is talking about. And that scripture is not talking about the spiritual demon Satan. When it says the dragon and his angels, is talking about Esau and his armies and the armies of the other nations coming up against Yahweh and the angels. And that prophecy hasn't even happened yet. Okay? And then they'll then the wacky tacky Christian will tell you that that nonsense of how Satan was kicked out of heaven and he's sent down to earth. Complete nonsense. Satan is a permanent council member, an angel, if you will, of the Heavenly Father's council. His job is to stir up wickedness on the planet Earth. That's what, well, matter of fact, that's what he told the Heavenly Father in the book of Job. He was doing his job. The Heavenly Father said, where are you coming from? As a matter of fact, let's read it. Job, the first chapter. Here's the Heavenly Father speaking to Satan. I thought, I thought, that, I thought Satan was battling the Heavenly Father, <laughs> according to the wacky taggy Christian. This is why the Bible says they have a zeal, but not according to knowledge. They don't know. They just do not know. But they have a zeal, though. Uh, Job, the first chapter, the sixth verse, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of God, key, key phrase there, sons of God, as in the angels, this is talking about the angels, came to present themselves before the Lord. This is like roll call, roll call. And Satan came also among them. So wait a minute, I thought Satan was battling the Heavenly Father. Isn't that what the wacky tacky Christian tell you? Isn't that what your pastor tells you? Who doesn't even know what he's talking about? Isn't that what they say? Satan is battling the Heavenly Father. Here in the book of Job, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. All the angels, like a roll call. Okay? And Satan came also among them. Satan himself is an angel, and he's part of the Heavenly Father's council. He's a permanent member of the Heavenly Father's council. Okay? The, the word angel means messenger. Their job is to do is to bring messages. That's what the angels do. They bring messages and they make things happen on the planet Earth. You know, when you see somebody get shot, that's the angel guiding the bullet, making that per making that person get shot. If that person is 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 to get is to be shot to be killed, that person's gonna die. Then their spirit goes right before the Heavenly Father to be judged for what they did in that body. That's how it works. Okay? A lot of people don't understand that. Anyway before the Lord, and Satan came also among them, and the Lord said unto Satan, wait a minute, they're dialoguing, they're speaking to each other, I thought they were fighting each other, and the Lord said unto Satan, whence comest thou, where are you coming from, you know, where are you coming from, listen to the reply Satan gave the Lord, then Satan, this is the spiritual demon Satan by the way, 
Then Satan answered the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth. That's his job. He was doing his job, what he was created to do, what the Heavenly Father created him to do. He was doing it. He said, I'm going, I was going to and fro in the earth, stirring up trouble, <laughs> doing what you tell me to do. And from walking up and down in it. <laughs> See? See? All right. But the Heavenly Father goes, the Heavenly Father, Satan goes back and forth. Okay, he'll, he'll be sent to the earth to do a job and then he goes back to the heavens to report back to the Heavenly Father. Then he's, he's sent back to the earth again, back and forth, back and forth. And the angels can do that all day because they never get tired. They're pure energy. Okay, these people of the world, they don't know the, the, the power of the Heavenly Father. They really don't. Man. They really don't. And the same thing is said in Job, the second chapter. Let's read the first verse. Again, there was a day when the sons of God, angels, came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. I thought they were battling each other. Isn't that what the wacky-tacky Christian tells you? So the next time you hear a wacky-tacky Christian tell you, well, you know, Satan is battling the Heavenly Father. Uh, he was a beautiful angel. This is the nonsense they tell you. He's a beautiful angel, and he rebelled against the Heavenly Father, and the Heavenly Father kicked him out of heaven, and he's dwelling here on the, on the planet Earth. Total nonsense. Total nonsense. Okay? Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence comest thou? And Satan answered the Lord, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it. Pretty much the same thing that was said in the first chapter. Because that is Satan's job. Okay? So, again, let's go to the book of Isaiah 45. A lot of our people are not afraid of the Heavenly Father because they really don't know his power, the extent of his power. They really don't consider he is a power that created his own nemesis, which is Satan. But Satan, even though he's the nemesis to the Heavenly Father, right? He's really in the Heavenly Father's good graces because he does what he's supposed to do. The word Satan means adversary, right? And his job is to stir tr trouble on the planet Earth. But in reality, he's really not an adversary to the Heavenly Father, even though his term means adversary, because he does what the Heavenly Father wants him to do, which is wickedness. The Heavenly Father controls both sides. We keep telling you this. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and 7. Isaiah 45 and 7. This is the Heavenly Father speaking through the prophet Isaiah. I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. And I'm not taking this out of context. It says what it says. It means what it says. The Lord said, I make peace and create evil. The Lord straight up said, I create evil. So if he wants Satan to stir up evil on the planet Earth, he gives Satan the job. Here's a job. I got a job for you. Go down on the planet Earth and cause this to happen or cause that to happen. Okay? That's his job. The word angel means messenger. He's doing his job. He's doing what he's supposed to do, what he was created to do. Let's get another one because I talked about killing, right? The Heavenly Father is the one that kills. And the, the, the average wacky tacky Christian, they won't accept that. They won't uh, like to hear that. But it's the truth. And it comes right out of the scriptures, Deuteronomy 32 and 39. It says, uh, it says this, you can't get more explicit than this. This is the Heavenly Father speaking to Moses, right? And it's recorded in the book of Deuteronomy 32nd chapter. This is the Heavenly Father speaking. He said, see now that I, even I am he. And let's not forget the Heavenly Father's proper name is Yahweh, which means he is, meaning he's everything. All right, everything that you see, he created it, and he used his only begotten son to create it, and the angels. Everything that you see, he created it. All right, every emotion that we have comes from him. He, he's the creator of emotions. Time itself comes from him. He created time. Now try to get your mind around that, wrap your, your brain around that. He created time. Time don't mean nothing to the Heavenly Father, because he created time. Think about that. Okay, <laughs> you know, when you think about the magnitude of the Heavenly Father, his great power, no wonder the prophets were in awe of the Heavenly Father because of his great power and his great magnitude. And once again, we're about to see that great power and magnitude once again. We're coming to that time, man, when, the, like the scriptures say, when the Heavenly Father begin to visit this earth. We're in that time now, brothers, and we're getting ourselves ready, man, 
for the Heavenly Father, not only him visit, visiting the earth, but Yahweh Shai too, his only begotten son. Anyway, Deuteronomy 32 and 39, see now that I, even I am he, and there is no God with me. There's, no, there's only one God, and his name is Yahweh. Point blank, period, end of story. Okay? All these other gods, these other pseudo-gods, they get their power from the Heavenly Father. Think about that. All these pseudo-gods that seem to go against the Heavenly Father, they get their power from the Heavenly Father. How powerful is that? You got these witches that think they're going against the Heavenly Father. These witches have no idea the power that they have on the left-hand side. It comes from the Heavenly Father on the left-hand side. Like we call it here, Great Millstone, we call it left-hand energy. Okay? Because the Heavenly Father creates both sides, controls both sides. See now that I, even I am He, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. So if anybody dies horrifically or they die quietly in their sleep, however they die, the Heavenly Father is the one that sanctioned their death. It tells you that in Psalm, the 68th chapter, the issues of death come from the Heavenly Father. See, once you learn all these, these truths, right? Once you learn all these solid truths and you really understand it, you begin to fear the Heavenly Father. You learn to fear the Heavenly Father. And now, now, you, now, you, now you're getting wise. Now, they, now you're cooking with gas, as they say. Now you're getting wise because now you understand the Heavenly Father. You understand what the majority of people on the planet Earth do not know, neither understand. You have, a, you have a greater reverence for the Heavenly Father. You really understand the Heavenly Father and know Him. Okay? And that, and that in itself is, 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 you can't put a price on that. That kind of understanding and knowledge, it's priceless. Okay? I'm telling you, and I've been doing this thing for almost 35 years, and I can honestly say that, okay? And you never get bored in this knowledge, this truth. You never get bored. Even if you, it may seem you're getting bored, it's all, every day is always exciting, learning-wise, in this, in this knowledge, in this truth. It never gets boring, okay? Well, like Yahweh Shai said, it's living water, okay? It says, see now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me, I kill and I make alive. How powerful is that? So for those of you hearing that for the first time, think about that. Really meditate on that. The Heavenly Father is the one that kills. Most people think someone dies, especially if they die a horrific death. Most people think that was Satan that took them out. No. <laughs> no, that was the Heavenly Father that took them out. And the Heavenly Father commanded the angels to make it happen. And the Heavenly Father was very explicit. Look, I want this guy, I want him to be taken out horrifically. I want him to fall off a bus and another bus crash over, crash over him, roll over him, flatten him like a pancake. Yeah. The issues of death come from the Heavenly Father, man. This is why the smartest thing you can do is learn to fear the Heavenly Father. His name is Yahweh and the Son's name is Yahweh Shai. Okay? It says, I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Someone gets a disease, guess who gave it to them? You got it. The Heavenly Father. If someone gets healed from that disease, guess who healed them? Was, did the herbs have something to do with it? Oh, yeah, of course. It, the scriptures say the Lord have made the medicines out of the earth. He that is wise will not abhor them. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it was the Heavenly Father that healed that person. All right? Because it wasn't his time to go. All right? It says, I make alive, I, I, I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Once, oh, man, that's powerful. Once you mock by the Heavenly Father, that's it. You ever heard the, the term mock for death? Well, guess what? Once you mock by the Heavenly Father, that's it. Your, your number comes up. That's it. You out of here. Okay? And there's no, nothing no one can do to save you, deliver you. All right? So, and then as we read on, it says, For I lift up my hand to heaven, this is the Heavenly Father speaking, and say, I live forever. If I wet my glittering sword, wet, notice the, the word there, wet, W-H-E-T, which means to sharpen. If I wet my glittering sword and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies and will reward them that hate me. Now, how powerful is that? That's the Heavenly Father talking. That ain't Satan talking. That's the Heavenly Father talking. So once again, the smartest thing we can do is learn to fear the Heavenly Father. Let's get back to the video. And, and, and see, the Lord is more terrible than Satan. Satan is Boom, a... there it is, man. When he said that, I said, yo... I got to do a video. It's video time. You heard what he, what he just said? I mean, in case you didn't catch that, let me bring it back. The guy that was playing the devil the whole time. But, but you saw, like, 
he 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 was so called black, you know. But he was like, oh, yeah, that was the actor Clarence Williams. Yep. You you gonna get knee deep in the shit? See, people yeah. don't know. That yeah, we like that part too. We always make fun of that part. You're gonna be knee deep in the shit, knee deep in the doo doo. That's what he said. You know, that was in the movie. Heavenly Father, the Lord created Satan, man. And, and, and see the. That's it. The Lord created Satan. You tell the wacky tacky Christian that they they ain't trying to hear. Then nah nah that's nah. You, you you don't understand the Bible. You don't understand the scriptures. Okay. Meanwhile, I just read to you in Job how Satan came to present himself before the Lord, but you still believe that Satan and the heavenly Father is battling each other. <laughs> Lord is more terrible than Satan. Satan is afraid of the Lord, man. You, uh, facts, man. Facts. Facts. Okay, the Lord is much more terrible than Satan. As a matter of fact, let me give you a clue. Something Yahweh Shai said. He said, "I will tell you one you should fear." All right, let me see. let's read that. Now, if anyone would know, Yahweh Shai would know. Okay, well, let's read what he said. Uh, let's read what he said. All right, bear with me for a minute. It might take me a while to find the scripture. If I can word it right, then I can find it. All right. Hmm. Yeah, yep. Gonna, let's go to Google. I will tell you one you should. Okay, yeah, this is it. We'll go with that one. Luke 12 and 5. Yeah, let's go with that one. Luke 12 and 5. Actually, Luke 12 and 4. So that we're going to the book of Luke, the 12th chapter, and the 4th verse. Okay, Luke 12 and 4. It says, And I say unto you, my friends, this is Yahweh is speaking. Clearly, you see these words are written in red. So Yahweh was speaking when he said this. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that can kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. And it's talking about Esau when they threaten us with their new world order. And we tell them, you can take that chip and shove it up your ass. <laughs> you know, because <laughs> you're going to have brothers that are, that are going to denounce that chip. It tells you that in, in uh, Revelation, the 20th chapter, the vision that the Apostle John saw on the island of Patmos. The brothers that became martyrs. For this gospel you know which means they didn't take the chip nor did they bow down to the uh, new world order which is what's what's in place and what's about to be brought in in a, in a horrific way anyway um so yahweh Shai said uh, don't fear them that can kill you and after that there's no more they can do now this is what yet this is the point of what yahweh Shai said but i will forewarn you whom you shall fear maybe he's going to say you should fear satan right maybe yahweh Shai is going to say that right well, let's keep reading. It says, Fear him, he's talking about his father, which after he hath killed, have power to cast into hell. Because remember, the heavenly father said, I kill and make alive. So what does it mean, have power to cast into hell? Is, it, is that talking about a place where there's fire and you, the guy with the red suit and the pitchfork? No, it's talking about these bodies. These bodies are hell. All right, because the heavenly father, he can put you to death. Your spirit goes back to the spirit world. Then he can send you back in a jacked up body. A body that that that, that was born without sight or born without, uh, you know, a body that has no sight. A body that has, that there's no legs, what have you. Like the Lord said, I wound and I heal. Okay, that's what that means. He has the power to put your, because even now as I speak, the bodies that we're in is like everlasting chains. It tells you that in Jude. Okay, so that's a, a great example. We're, we're, and we mentioned that at the camp earlier today. Okay, we're in, we're in uh, hell right now in, the, in these bodies that we're in. These are everlasting chains. Okay, uh, Jude 1 and 5, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this. How that, and this Jude was Yahushua's biological brother, by the way. How that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of e Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. 
And the angels which kept not their first estate. Who's that talking about? Us. What was our first estate in the spirit world? We were in the spirit world. We were chilling in the spirit world before we came here. We're nothing but spirits and bodies. And like the Apostle Paul said, there's a, there's a physical world and there's a spirit world. The spirit world is where Yahweh Shai, uh, um, Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, and the angels dwell. Good and bad angels, okay? Which the word angel just means messenger, okay? Uh, it says, and the angels which kept not their first estate, that's us, we were sent to the planet earth, but left their own habitation, that's us, he have reserved in everlasting chains. What are these everlasting chains? These bodies that we're in. And, and then you notice, right, each generation, these bodies get progressively worse and worse and worse. Even our lifespan is cut down. When you go back to the time of Adam, you had people living 900 plus years old. Noah was having children at the age of 500, okay? But as we're coming to the end, if you get 70 years, you're doing good, okay? It tells you in the scripture, uh, we get three score and 10. And if by reason of strength, we get 80, you know, four score years, 80 years. And that's by reason of strength. So if you if you live past 80, you're doing, you and most people who live past 80, they want to die, man, because they, they're catching all kind of hell. They, they got all kind of infirmities, you know, so we're in this. The point is, we're in these everlasting chains, which are these bodies, like it says here in Jude. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. When is that going to happen? When Yahweh Shai comes back. And some of us are going to receive a righteous judgment. That's the elect, because their bodies are going to be changed. We're going to be delivered. Yahweh Shai is going to deliver us from these everlasting chains. And that's in the book of 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. As a matter of fact, let's get that. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And, and that should really comfort you brothers, especially you brothers that are going through all kinds of horrific infirmities. I know you want to be delivered from those bodies. And I'm thinking of a brother right now. He knows who he is. Okay, I, if, he's, if he's listening and watching, he probably has a big smile on his face right now. My brother know who he is. Anyway, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Uh, let's go right to the point, man. 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And uh, the 50th verse. L look at the subheading. The mystery of res resurrection. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of, of, of the Heavenly Father. That's the bodies we are now. Neither doth corruption, the body we are now. Remember, everlasting chains. Even if we don't want to sin, guess what? We still sin. Did not the Apostle Paul said that? The things that I want to do, I don't do it. And the things that I don't want to do, that's what I do. That's what the Apostle Paul said. Why? Because he was in an everlasting chain. He was in that body, that sinful body. And it's the same thing for us. Even more so now. We live in a time where, where like the scriptures say, iniquity shall abound. Right? Is that not written? Iniquity shall abound. You look everywhere, it's nothing but wickedness, man. Yahweh Shai can't come quick enough. And Yahweh can't destroy this place fast enough, man. That's the bottom line. It says, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of the Heavenly Father, neither doth corruption inherit in corruption, because naturally we're corrupt being in these bodies. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Remember, we're in those everlasting chains, which everlasting means lasting for an age. Ever means an age. So we're about to come up out of these bodies. That's what Yahweh is going to do for us when he comes back. Not only is he going to deliver us, snatch us from, the, from the, the fiery soup, as it were, he's going to change our bodies. Our bodies are going to be changed. We're going to be given those superhuman bodies, okay? It says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. That's beginning with the elect. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, like that, at the last trump, that which signifies Yahweh is coming back, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So it said it twice, because we're in these everlasting chains. We, we long for deliverance. You know, that's why certain people commit suicide, because they want to be free of those everlasting chains. You know, it's, it's been said, some people, right before the moment of death, they say, I'm free, and then they die, you know. Now, now we understand why people, which you're not really supposed to do that. You're not supposed to take your own life. 
You know, suicide literally means, sui means self, side means kill, kill self, right? But you're not supposed to do that, okay? Anyway, it says, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, see? And as for the elect, the beginning of the elect, the nation of Israel. And this mortal, which is the, what we're in, we're in the mortal, these mortal bodies, that's why we get sick, die, whatever. And this mortal must put on immortality. Do you know what that means? Immortality means you can't die. You cannot die. You, you go from being a uh, mortal to being a god. And that's in the book of Psalm 82 and 6 where it says, I have said, ye are gods. So, you know, you even got Jake's in the simplicity and called himself God body. You know, God, the so-called five percenters, that's what they call themselves, God body. Okay, well, they got it, they got it a little right, but they, what they got wrong is calling themselves five percenter. But are they gods? Yeah. Gods with a lower G. Psalm 82 and 6. If you're an Israelite, you're a god. Okay? Israel means he's a prince of power, as in a god. But with a lower G, because our power has been taken. But guess what? We're going to get our power back. Beginning with the elect. Right? And I'm reading to you an example. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, when's that going to happen? When the Shai comes back. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. See? So no longer will we fear the sentence of death. Okay, that's going to be a thing of the past. Okay? But that's beautiful, man. That is beautiful. All right? So again, Jude 1 and 6, and the angels which kept not their first estate, now you understand the scripture, this verse here, but left their own habitation, that was the spirit world. We left the spirit world. We've been sent to this physical world. He have reserved in everlasting chains. That's these bodies, which we're, we're hoping for the day when we, when we can be changed by Yahweh Shai, like I read, under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. What's going to happen on the great day? Those of us that are the, of the elect of Yahweh Shai, we're going to be changed in the twinkling of an eye, just like that. Okay? Let's get back to the video. Once again, when the Lord brought the Lord brought the flood, Satan didn't bring the flood. Exactly. Hey, hey, when the Lord brought the flood, Satan stepped back like you know, Satan was like shit. <laughs> oh, the works the, the forget about it. The works that some of the works that the Heavenly Father does, Satan is in awe of those works. There's a scripture where it says the 24 angels, all they do is praise the Heavenly Father day and night. All they do is praise. That's their job. The Heavenly Father's way out like that. Okay, like I said, and I'll say it again, the smartest thing we can do is learn how to fear the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. There is nothing smarter than that. You know, hey, when the Most High Yahweh, when He brought that flood, Satan, Satan, yep. Satan, like Satan got back. Yep. You know, yeah. And and the Lord, He gonna do a lot of great things in this time. And the main thing being being uh, the main thing being thermonuclear destruction. Oh, that's gonna be the magnum opus. Look that word up. Latin title Magnum Opus. That's going to be the Magnum Opus of the Heavenly Father's only begotten Son, man. To bring that destruction, that's going to be a supreme work of art. And even, and not even, well, all the angels are going to marvel at it. Okay? Again, like I said, the, the 24 elders, all they do is praise the Heavenly Father. Day and night. And they never get tired because they're angels. Angels don't get tired. Okay? Angels are pure energy. And the Heavenly Father controls the angels. There's a scripture where it says the Heavenly Father. Hold up, man. Whoa. I got to bring that one out. He charge of his angels with folly. Hey, there's the angels are doing his bidding. They do to the letter what he wants them to do. And he still charges them with folly. <laughs> Come on. What the, oh, my goodness, man. Uh, charges them with folly. Let's get that, man. Charges them and these are angels. Angels, they do a perfect work. And yet the Heavenly Father ch still charged them with folly. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. Uh, this is uh, the book of Job 4 and 18. And we're going to uh, play a little more of that video and end the video. Uh, we're going to go to the book of Job 4 and 18. Job 4 and 18. And you, you're not going to get these kind of truths from the wacky tacky church, man. You forget about that, man. They, they haven't got a clue what's going on. All they do is sing and dance all day and read Jesus wept and, and John 3.16. For God so loved the world. I, mean, it's, I don't know what they is. They just lost. They got a zeal, but not according to knowledge. Anyway, Job 4 and 18. It says, Behold, 
This is the heavenly, uh, this is, um, I believe this was Job speaking, right? Because sometimes it could be Eliphaz and uh, Job's friends, but this time, well, see, Eliphaz is speaking, uh, Eliphaz. Then Eliphaz, the Temanite, answered and said, so that was him speaking, that was Job, one of Job's friends who came to comfort Job when he was going through what he was going through. And this is what he said. He said, Behold, he put no trust in his servants, and his angels he charged with folly. <laughs> and the angels, they do what he wants them to do. All right? How much less in them that dwell in houses of clay? Who's he talking about? Us. Do we not dwell in houses of clay? There was, there was, a, there was a song called... Uh, the artist was, uh, I think it came out in the, either the late 50s or the early 60s. The name of the artist was Gene McDaniels. And he did a song called A Hundred Pounds of Clay. Okay, and he was talking about a woman that he was all in love with. All right, that the Heavenly Father took a hundred pounds of clay and made this woman for him, this great woman. You know, that's the gist of the song. So this proves we're in the houses of clay. I mean, that's just an uh, uh, anecdote. But it's the, the proof is there. When you die, what, what happens? Your body goes back to the earth. So we're, we're made of clay. Okay, we're made of dirt. So it says, how much less in them that dwell in houses of clay? That's us. Whose foundation is, is in the dust, right? Which are crushed before the moth, the moth. See? So think about that, man. The Heavenly Father charges own angels with folly. And the angels do a perfect work for the Heavenly Father. He still charges them with folly. So the Heavenly Father truly has to be feared, man. You know? But the Lord don't play, man. Yeah. Once again, our God created Satan. And yeah. Satan does exactly what the Heavenly Father wants him to do. Absolutely, brother. Well said. Satan does exactly what the Heavenly Father wants him to do. And he could, the Heavenly Father could still turn around and charge him with folly. Now think about that. Think about that. That's the power that we serve. His name is Yahweh, and his son's name is Yahweh Shai. And you can't reply against the Heavenly Father. You can try, but you can't counsel the Heavenly Father, and you can't reply against him. He created you, man. You didn't create him. You don't tell him what to do. He tells you what to do, and you do it too. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Jeremiah said, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man to, that walketh to direct his steps. So the question is, who directs the steps of man? The Heavenly Father, man. We're nothing but automatons, robots for the Heavenly Father. That's, that's, that's the God's honest truth. Okay? So I'm going to end the video uh, there. Hope you were edified. And as usual, until the next one.